Uh, so, uh, Math Core Index, uh, we just uh, finished up uh, Math Core Index uh, 2019. Math, here we are. Uh, can I get your names? Seb. Andrew. Kyle. Seb, what do you do? Uh, vocals. Drums. Bass and vocals. There it is, guys. Uh, a little uh, backstory uh, for anybody that doesn't know about meth in general. Um, Seth. Meth was actually like my first project where it was all like, I guess just me like front to back with um, just like all the instrumentation and everything. Like usually I always have like other people I'm collaborating with. Or... So when did meth start? Um, it started, I want to say like very beginning of 2016 me and zach our guitarist um we just like met up and we're just kind of messing around like he's been like he kind of just like started recording stuff so Mm -hmm. we're like yeah let's try to like write a song or something and like i kind of just like hodgepodge together a demo and then it just kind of sat on the shelf for like a year and um and then our first ep was um I just went over to Zach's house one day and had absolutely nothing written or whatever. Children we were, are watching. Yeah, children are watching. So mm-hmm. like we, like nothing was written whatsoever. We got together and just like I laid down. Um, like I'm predominantly a drummer, um, typically when I'm in bands and stuff. Uh, but um, so we laid down drum tracks for the children are watching first had no idea what any of the songs were going to sound like. I was just like, okay, just we'll just hit record, and we'll go we'll record drums. And Wow, you really reversed engineered those songs then. Yeah, it was, very, it was very strange, and it was all just like in a day. Like, I'm not a guitarist by any means whatsoever, and it was just like, um, a lot of it was just like doing the drums first, and then we kind of just like, the guitar was just general ideas I had, and me trying to do it, um, Zach did like one breakdown at the end of the album elder body so like what was zach that. doing there then yeah. exactly <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. so so i mean so, so i mean what was zach doing there exactly oh like, he he was recording it all like so he was just um and just kind of like guiding me in a way too like we were oh, just okay uh like more or less clap like i most of the projects like well, I, a good yeah, probably most of the projects that I've done in the past have gone through Zach in some way, where it's just like oh, okay. he's uh, just like started recording. So he started recording like my old, like one of my old bands, like Other Masquerades. We did an EP with him, or it was a split, and he just kind of like started recording. And then a lot of the times it was just like me and him just working together in some way. And then um, once meth actually started becoming an actual like a full-fledged band then he kind of we asked him to join and so we been... i mean we covered meth like earlier like with math core index and everything <laughs> uh when did it become a full-fledged band exactly um fuck like end of 2017 right yeah like... it, was, it was fall 2017 uh kyle and i used to be in a band called black nail which we also covered on Math Core Index. Yeah. And uh, Black Nail was seeing its demise as our vocalist, Connor, moved to Rhode Island. And with the guys in With Tweak. the guys in Tweak <laughs> so that he could be... <laughs> wow. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> basically, between Tweak and Black Nail, we did like a NBA-style swap where uh, the Black Nail guys, me, Kyle, and our guitarist, Richard, joined Seb in Meth they got my to make rights, it a full project. They got my rights, and then... We got the rights to Connor. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so, so everybody out there understands. So, Tweak was who, or who is who? Um, initially, it was me, um, Connor, the drummer, vocalist, and Will, and um, those two were like art. Well, I don't want to say works; they are. They're the heart and soul of that band, um, and they just like. Yeah, I could go on about yep. how much I love them together. Um, but yeah, they started that band as a two piece, and then I'd never even really played bass or anything um, before joining that band. And I just hit them up one day, and they're just like, hey, i wondering if you guys need a bassist or anything. And then yep. we just started jamming, and it went from there, and it just turned into um, we did like two albums together I Am Overcome with Hate, um, which was. They wrote all of that, and I just kind of like jumped in and 
added some bass parts and stuff to that, and then we did a short EP mm -hmm. um, that was still like mostly guided by them. I had a lot more of like uh, I, I felt like I had more of a presence on that record. Yeah. Um, but still, just their entire brain just shitting on everything, and it was just really fucking cool. Um. <laughs> so, so with Black Nail, mm -hmm. um, with you guys, with that demise of that, like was just a natural flow or I mean with this NBA draft kind of thing <laughs> yeah I mean was I mean were you guys just like oh like take him take him like that kind of thing or S how did it go down exactly so Connor McKenzie the vocalist of Black Nail decided to move to Rhode Island with Tweak to to be a part of Tweak and when that was decided um we were all kind of like well we're you know we're gonna have the last show and whatever but the rest of us in Black Nail, like, we were in other projects and stuff, so we weren't, like, necessarily worried about, like, joining another band, and then Seb caught wind of Connor joining Tweak and was like, hey, you know, I've been doing the meth thing for a bit, do you guys want to join this and make it a full-fledged band? Awesome. And then from another one of my bands called Dead Hummingbird, we recruited the guy who plays, like, synth lap seal stuff in meth, and, uh, then Zach as well. So. I mean, it, it, it's quite a fucking crew from one person to this, or one or two people to yeah. this, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's, um, I mean, I think when we, even like, even before like, Children Are Watching, or right after Children Are Watching stuff, we had talked about like doing like a f band together, or like doing that um, to some degree, like at least me and Andrew. We talked um, about doing like a couple shows or something, and like, when, as soon as Seb was done with the children are watching, he sent it to me. The first thing I said to him was, "I'm gonna be in this band." That was the very <laughs> first thing Ooh, I said. After yeah. that, and then, All of right. course, that came true. So. so we're gonna move on. Cool. I love you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're naturally you're already involved. Mm -hmm. um, are you involved at this point? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So, what with I love you? How many members are in the band at this uh, point? Six. Six. Yeah. All so, of us. so like the, yeah. the, the same crew, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, like, or not everyone that's here, but yeah, just the same like writing crew. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's so yeah, it's confusing. So 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 basically, I love you with six people, and this new record will be six people. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. And they're the and same the, people. Yeah. I love you and Mother of Red Light are yeah, the same six people. Yes. So uh, there. Yeah. Now, Mother of Red Light, um, Prestetic picks you guys up. How? What's going on exactly? Um. Wait, Seb. with like, yeah, no, the how did that happen? I think it means Seb, uh, what's going on? Oh my god, no, <laughs> here, I'm gonna jump down a hole. Um, <laughs> um, no, it was really weird. Um, we put up a video after like our second show. Um, uh, we played at Subterranean, which is like just a venue we play at all the time. This is during I Love um, You, right? Yeah, this is okay. just, like right after, um, like not maybe a little over two months after I Love You came out. We played, it was our second show. We just like recorded a video. We had our friend like edit it and everything. And we we're just like, we just need to put something up. And like a few weeks later, like I think you guys were sharing it around. And then it was just kind of like circulating on its own. We're like, okay, it's like a little thing. And then we got an email from Steve, the Steve Joe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, he was just like, hey, I just like checked this out. And this is really cool. Like, uh, just asking what our plans were for like writing everything down the line and I was just like playing like I've been playing in bands for like upwards of, like 14 15 years now and like that's the first time any like any label type person like it emailed me and I was just like what the fuck is this <laughs> like yeah. and I like sent them like a screenshot of everything and I was just like this is a thing that's happening we're all just like that's fucking wild like it was just like two shows in it's which pretty is, fucking awesome label yeah. to be bugging you too yeah exactly like yeah. it was just very um surprising to us in a way just like um just like the speed of it it was something that like we were obviously like trying to strive to like not just get signed by like, just like some sort of um but you hadn't anticipated uh, this level of success no basically. no not at all i mean we, it was just like one of those things where it's like it'd be cool for us to like get attention down the line but like to whatever degree was just like as long as whatever but um no, it's something that fast was just uh -huh. pretty 
wild. So, Mother Red Light, uh, how many tracks on this new album? Nine. Nine. Nine? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, all new? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All new stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, where'd you guys record? We recorded drums at Bricktop Studios in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And then our guitarist, Zach Farrar, he recorded everything else. And then we sent it out for mixing to Bricktop again. And then Jack Shirley from Atomic Garden mastered it. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Seb, like, as far as like what you've done so far, what are your influences like? Even right now with Meth, like, what would you say you're channeling from? Um, with Mother Red Light, I mean, they all know a lot of swans, a lot of um, just like I don't know, just like general darkness. A lot of the time, like, um, it's like I was in a lot of swans. I was in a lot of um, this band Coil, who's like another just yeah, like and old just like dark 80s band um just like i don't know anything that just like seemed very out of the spectrum of like the general stuff that we would try to like write with with um work like i love you and stuff like it like i love you is very just kind of like it's very metal like metal core to like it's core with i guess for like a better terms that's dumb but yeah. <laughs> um just we're trying to like branch away from that and just like trying to get like keep the darkness of the band um because that was more atmospheric yeah oh absolutely yeah yeah like i don't know it's just like that seems to be the common ground with everyone which like all of our influence and stuff are very different but it just we all very much just mesh with like that dark tone and just taking our own like approaches and so where are you guys channeling from same or uh i would say i'm probably about the same uh I guess in terms of like drumming specifically, uh, I guess just like a lot of metal stuff I, I started listening to, kind of trying to get, um, I guess like a better idea of doing that because I'm not necessarily a metal drummer by trade. Yeah. Um, so I was listening to a lot of like Imperial Triumphant and like, I don't know, just like yeah. weird stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about yourself? Uh, with me, I like a lot of death metal that is no question um that's mostly what i listen to but i guess for this record a lot of what i contributed solely was a lot of vocals um and you do what in the band exactly i play bass and do vocals um that kind of took the wheel on writing the bass for this record um but as far as vocals go that was my kind of my thing um, I draw a lot of influence from like f- for these vocals from like this one doom band from Chicago Indian um, I like a lot of primitive man just like any any anything He's per- prim- primitive man for sure <laughs> <laughs> any anything that just sounds as visceral as possible and something that kind of stands out mm-hmm. um, and just I guess, like, as far as, like, influence for, like, any future projects for meth and things like that, I've I've been going back to, like, a lot of, like, Scott Walker and just, like, very, just, like, just, like, very out-of-pocket music, basically. Yeah, you guys seem, like, all kind of, like, deep and, like, digging somewhere, like, else, basically. We all really like that same dark atmospheric stuff, but then we all kind of have our own little pockets that we like, yeah, our own little niches that we all contribute our own little bits through yeah i gotta say just like just be a fanboy just crazy as he said but then also see the guys from blackmail and everything too <laughs> just like nice to meet everybody like uh like as far as like christian and i go just like thanks for just creating just dark and heavy music and just like just continuing that motion and everything um honestly i think we might just kind of call it good from here guys uh yeah. Um, so, Seb, um, when is the album Actually, out? I have one question for you. Oh, Christian, right. what's going on? <laughs> I do. Um, what, is, what is the concept behind Mother of Red Light? Is there, like, a narrative behind it? Or? Uh, boom. There's, so, between I Love You and Mother of Red Light, there's, um, it is all just, like, one giant concept, like, I love you, kind of. Because um, you have I love you in the lyrics of the... That. Yeah, like, a, there's a lot of um, things that I wanted, yeah, just to channel, like, a little bit as a callback to, like, I love you with... Yeah. Um, just so the cohesiveness was there within the story um but yeah it's all just one giant narrative from i love you to mother of red light like i love you being just kind of 
about um, I never named the character it was always written from like first person so I'll for him to as the character or whatever but like he uh, gets kidnapped by just it turns into the choir of red light which is like the cult that everything is kind of written around and um, he gets kidnapped brainwashed into believing he's God and it's his like process of like digesting that basically and like um, just this cult basically telling him that and then Mother of Red Light takes place like a couple years after the fact as his like personalities have kind of like split in half where his um, human half is kind of buried underneath this god that like he's just kind of like watching his own body through like it's his body but it's through the eyes of god in a way where it's just are you um, referencing that at all in the music video perhaps just a little bit is um there's the dichotomy of okay. like the black shirt white shirt in the yeah, video yeah, yeah, is yeah. um like it yeah it plays along with like the whole role in like a loose way it's not like directly from um like a like part of the actual narrative it's just more or less just kind of like reflect well i'm so glad i asked because that is far more <laughs> profound than i would have ever expected yeah that's yeah um and honestly all i was going to ask that before that was just like when is the album out <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why I had, like, um yeah no it's just it's yeah it's written in there it's i'm it's very it's very metaphor heavy so like it might that's not tell yeah, but so then my yeah. question when is the album <laughs> the album's out uh, august 23rd august 23rd how's tour been so far <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know not enough crack houses um, but uh where, where, where can everybody get the record uh what's going on with wait, repeat. Yeah, where, where can everybody get the record? Oh, everyone Come can out get for a show in LA tomorrow. You can get it, but <laughs> if you don't, you have to wait. <laughs> um, I got the record already, so yeah. No, um, we'll have it. If I don't know if this is gonna air before um, the record's well, out, but next few days, yeah. like, and we'll like edit like random shit out too and everything. So oh, like, like sick. so hey, Seb, when's the album coming out? Blackhawks. Um. <laughs> 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 no. Um, August 23rd, uh, you can find uh, pre-sales online through the Prosthetic website, uh, um, uh, through our Bandcamp and everything, and then, awesome. um, yeah, we have them on hand as well. So. Oh, um, I got a nice variant. What's your two record variants you guys got going on? The black and what else? Yeah, yeah, we have like a black swirl, and then it's a red with a black smoke kind of underneath the red. <laughs> Hear that, vinyl nerds? We got that yeah. shit. I'm about to cop one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so once again, guys, uh, thank you so much, Meth, for playing the fest and just interviewing with us afterwards and yeah, everything, yeah. man. Thank you um, so much. Good luck on this new release and thank just you. touring and just producing fucking heavy music after this. Cool. No, thank you so much. Thanks yeah. for Thank you very much. Doing everything you do. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs>